Good evening and welcome to The Connection. How's everybody doing this evening? Good. Come on, sound off. How you doing this evening? Good, good, good. Uh, welcome to everybody that's in the sanctuary and welcome to you that are joining us online. Thank you for joining us. Now, has anybody got anything to say? Well, good. Let's sing. If you'd stand and join me in a song. Where's my clicker? Oh, here it is. Okay, now I'm lined up. Here we go. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lamps. Oh, come and sing this song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name. Oh, give him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain, and you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. Good and gracious Heavenly God. Mighty Father, we come before you today, Lord, thanking you once again to be in your house and to be with your people. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with us during this service, dear Lord, to stir that Holy Spirit that you let dwell inside of us, dear Father, that we might receive your words and take them and hide them in the hearts that we might not sin against you. We ask, dear Father, that you would go with us as we start to make our advances into the future, dear Father, and help us discern what you would have us to do. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. to the skies Your righteousness is like the mighty mountain yeah. Your justice flows like the ocean
And I will find my high strength in the shadow of your wings. to the sky your righteousness is like the mighty mountains yeah your justice flows like the ocean tide now here you go raise your voice and I will lift to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, yeah. Your justice flows like the ocean. one two where have you seen God this week I'm gonna I get a start I get a start I get a start that song that we just sang 
I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. We're practicing this this morning. And we practice every day. Every day we practice. I've been practicing music every day from the time I was this big. Just barely big enough to talk. I have been. I'm sitting on a piece of property that my mother and father own. My mom would sit and she would hit a chord on a guitar to get me and my little brother started and we'd practice every day. Today, I'm 50 some odd years old and I'm still practicing in that same spot. I could sing of your love forever. I got to practicing that music this morning and I'm looking outside at this beautiful landscape that I've been looking at for all my whole entire life and I realized something and I couldn't go no farther. This knot came up in my throat and I was like, you know what? I will be singing of his love forever. Even on the other side, when I get there, I will be in that choir and I know and I can hear my mother and I can hear my grandmother singing over there already. I will sing of his love forever. Not I could, I will. Guarantee you. And I just felt God in that moment and he just moved my spirit. We had a nice little talk about it, chat about it. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful to open your day with God in the presence of the Lord every day, it changes how you perceive the day. It really does. Honest. Go ahead. What he said. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, I see God every day, every morning when I get up, every day when I look at my wife. Amen. We talked this morning. We had a very good conversation as well. I see God every time I walk in these doors, and I see all of these smiling faces coming in, greeting you all every Saturday evening. It is so good to see you. Beautiful. I see God, I, especially in the last couple of weeks, for the outpouring of love from people that I know, people that I have never met, uh, uh, expressing their uh, sympathy and condolences for our family loss. But I don't feel sadness about that loss. I feel joy. Amen. I feel joy. So I see God everywhere. everywhere. Thank you, folks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Art. I was just telling my friend here uh, just before service started, that it feels so good to be here. It's like a family and everybody was just chattering all over the place. Everybody had a conversation going. There was nobody sitting, staring at the wall. It's just so good to be here. Yeah. And I see God in here when I come to this place. You feel the love in the room, can't you? Yes, you can. You can, absolutely, amen. Anyone else got one? Well, uh, Constance and I are part of the visioning committee and it's most of the time when I'm in the meeting all I can see is the door and, and I, t trying to figure out how to get there but uh, I would say that this has been one of the more exciting committees I've been on and we are looking to move forward in the church and move out of the church you know we want to reach other people and bring people in so it's been really exciting, and uh, with that, we need your prayers on that to kind of keep us going, and that's uh, everybody that we have talked to, the other churches in the communities that have been doing well, they said, well, the first thing you got to do is make sure the Holy Spirit's moving with you, so we would Amen. Ask, that's right. a ask for your prayers on that. So. That's right. Amen. I agree. This is Chiefs related. Um, I, <laughs> I heard a, um, a news story um, about, uh, and you may have heard it too on, on last night's news, um, about the a fan page of the Chiefs uh, deciding that they would challenge people, uh, Chiefs fans, to donate to a charitable cause that the the uh, bills support 
And so all week, uh, donations were pouring into uh, the charitable organization that is in the, the, grandfather's, the grandmother's name of one of the Bill's uh, players. And it was a pediatric hospital, and I just thought well, that was a wonderful thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, talk about miracles. Holy smoke, you guys, if you guys saw the game last week, miracles do happen. <laughs> Holy smoke, it was a bad one. Sometimes We're going, it's the 11th hour. Sometimes it's the 11th hour, exactly, that's right. Has anybody else got one? A prayer request, a joy, concern? Do you want to update us on your dad oh, since well. you talked to him? Okay, so, so it's been an eventful week for my dad. For those of you who know and remember or were here last week, my, my father uh, fell and he had a brain bleed. Dan goes to camp. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, man, man versus driveway, <laughs> yeah, versus driveway, driveway one, and and so so um, he was at Barnes Hospital, and they because of his age, 80, 89 next month, uh, they treat the, this kind of thing conservatively. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this is so similar to Monica's story, who we've been praying for, who is in rehab right now still and continuing to move forward. Uh, it's not funny. It's sad, actually. My dad got moved into rehab. He sounded great on Sunday, and apparently uh, I was supposed to be leaving s uh, Tuesday morning, and I was going to spend a couple days with him, and he fell on Monday night. And there's more to that story, but back to Barnes eventually uh, in that day. By the end of the day, he was back in, 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 at Barnes. And uh, uh, this morning, uh, sadly, he he had another hematoma, and it was right in front of the other hematoma. Now, the hematoma he's got is of the large size and width, and so it wasn't reducing. And they did this great, great, we had a great neurosurgeon who there's been a, a procedure around for 20 years that they're advocating this should be the gold star, and it should be how we treat this kind of thing. And they went in today, this morning, and did this very wonderful, wonderful treatment and procedure, and he's still coming out of it, but he sounds better already. When he was, when we talked to him before he went in, it sounds like his mouth, or his tongue is stuck in the bottom of his mouth, and it's part of his brain that's affected by it. You know, his, his legs are, are a problem, but when I talked to him on the phone, just on the way here, with my sister sitting there, he sounded, his tongue was moving, you could tell, he's, how are you feeling? I'm feeling rotten, <laughs> and it was clear. And he should be feeling rotten, he's been through a lot, but. Thank you all for your prayers. Prayers work. We were praying this morning for surgeons. We were praying for staff. We were praying for dad. We we're praying for my sister. Thank you so much for being my family, my spiritual family of faith here, because I know you're in it with me. Thank you. And I love you. Praise God. Amen. Just like Constance said, the love, the love, and the prayers that go out for each other, how we hold each other up. Boy, it's just amazing. It's amazing. And we, uh, that, that age group, something like that happens, the chances of him, not, of him making it through that are, are just are huge. And it's just, it's just amazing that, that he is making it through it. And it's because of prayer. It really is. I believe, I believe that it's because of prayer. Uh, immediately when the first time it happened, when he fell, contacted just a few church members and here and there and they started praying and immediately it stopped and it's it just amazing and the continued prayer you know even our our facilities you know these rehab facilities and these and these and these different facilities that they've got everything is overwhelmed at this point it, it really is i mean there's not enough staff to take care of the people it's just it's it's terrible and it's not their fault it's not their fault that it's that way. It's just that way, and and it's just and it's and it's terrible. And uh, and we have put ourselves in the position where, where as humans, human beings, we have to take care of one another. We have to. We have to take care of. We can't rely on someone else taking care of our elders and taking care of our family. We have to. We have to make the sacrifice and take care of one another. We have to. And I know several people that are doing that at this point. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing that we love and care for one another in our old age. It really, really is. And it's a, it's a blessing 
It really is. And so I see that in these, in these rehab facilities. And, and okay, we're taking you out of the hospital and we're going to put you over here. And they're just not, they're just not staffed properly to where they can take care of them. And, and we have got to be able to step up and take care of our elders and love one another. Yes. We really do. We really do. It's a, it's a good thing. And, uh, and thank you all so much. Our church family has been praying for this and, hel and helping, and, it, and prayer works. It really, really does. Has anybody else got anything? Go ahead, Brenda. Because um, they still have not got a good treatment plan for him. They really don't know what's wrong with him. We're waiting. We're next on call for three different procedures that needs to be done at St. Louis. Okay. So we just need to get him lined out, and hopefully whatever the diagnosis is, we know God has a plan. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, absolutely. Logan's a good boy, that's for sure, and we, we love him. Every one of us do, and we keep praying for him also. Okay, anybody else got anything? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll follow this by the Lord's Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, our maker, our master, creator of all things. As we look around us today, dear Lord, we realize that everything that we have is of you. We thank you, dear Father, for letting us be a part of your creation and giving us the ability to take care of your creation. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with us as we come together as one, as the body of Christ. And we look at, out into our world and we see all of the struggles and the strife and the people that are going to and fro. And we, when we realize, dear Father, that, that your Holy Spirit dwells within us and we have the help, we have the knowledge, we have the power to help others. We ask, dear Father, that you would let us know, dear Lord, what we need to do in this world of darkness to shine the light into all dark places. We ask, dear Father, you would hear us as we come together to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come into this time of tithes and offering, we're, we're back to the spike again. Our COVID, COVID numbers are up and that they're down and they're up and are down. And so we're going to still continue giving our tithes and our offering the way we've been doing it for several months. We're not going to pass the basket. So I would ask if you would drop your donations in the basket as you come or as you leave. If you're here with us in the sanctuary, if you're joining us online, uh, there are several different ways that you can, that you can uh, donate money or, you know, you can donate your time. There's all kinds of different stuff that you can do. Uh, as the body of Christ, we are, we are required to help and to serve others as believers. You do realize that, right? Not only money-wise, but service-wise. That's what we're all about. And so if you're wanting to donate or you're wanting to help out the church, there, it takes a little bit of money to keep the church rolling and keep everything up and running. You can donate your money. You can drop it off at the office. There's a button you can push there to donate. Uh, you can drop it by. You can do it several different ways. And we appreciate everything that you do, each and every one of you, to help the furtherment of God's kingdom on this earth. If you would pray with me the prayer of abundance. O oh, gracious, merciful, and abundant God, with thankful hearts we give you our praise, our offerings, and all that we are. Let the world see your generous nature working through us. Make us a reflection of your love. Amen. Love never fails.
Love never fails. I've been here several different times before. I've preached on this scripture a whole bunch of different ways. I titled a sermon, Love is the Answer. You remember the song? Love is the Answer. Done that a couple years ago. Remember that one? I've done that one. Preached on this same piece of scripture. Preached on the same piece of scripture, Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Doing old rock and roll songs. Old rock and roll tunes this evening. Anybody know that song? Yep. Okay, you all know that song. Preached it that direction. This year, as we come across the 13th chapter of Corinthians, the love chapter, my favorite chapter in the Bible. It really is. I love love. I love love. It's great. And being getting close to Valentine's Day, you know what? We ought to be talking a little bit about love anyway, right? You know, that's just kind of the way that goes. Love. All about love. So this year, when I come across this scripture, I'm looking at it in a little bit different light. And a lot of people, a lot of pastors, they manuscript their, their, their preaching and they go and they say, okay, well, I'm preaching on that same piece of scripture. So I'm going to pull this manuscript and I'm going to do that manuscript again. I don't do that. I take notes. When I get done with my notes, I pull them out of my Bible and I drop them in the trash. And then when I come across that scripture, the next time around... I do the same thing. I research, I read, I pray. And you know what happens? Every time something different comes out. I don't know why it is. It's the same words. God works in all different kinds of ways. And so... We started in Corinthians in chapter 12, and so I, so I started, when I start into something like this, I start reading and trying to get a context of what is going on within this whole situation. And so if you take the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians and you just, and you just talk about it as love, you can talk about it in many different directions, right? So if you look at it in the context in what and how it is written, let's go this way. So, if you go all the way back to the front of 1 Corinthians, you notice a pattern. And so, when, you, when, the, when Paul is talking to the church in Corinth, this church, buddy, I'm telling you, it's got some trouble. And all churches do. There's all kinds of stuff going on in churches everywhere. Because the devil's going to attack he ain't going to attack the people that are already on his side. He's going to attack the ones that are not on his side, and he wants to get them over here with him, correct? That's just the way the devil works. That's, that's just him. That's how he is. So if you start looking through this letter of Paul, you start getting this right here. In the, uh, I'm going to go all the way back to... Okay, let's go all the way back to the third chapter. The third chapter in 1 Corinthians, and he's talking, Paul is talking to the leadership of the church at this point. And so uh, the 16th verse says this, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? All right? So, if you jump another chapter over, Paul's talking now to this, addressing this sexual immorality that's in the church, that's going on within the church. And so he's addressing this. First, he's addressing the leadership. Don't you know that his Holy Spirit is dwelling in your midst? Now he's talking to the individuals the sexual immorality part that's going on in the church. And he says this, Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Talking once again 
about the Holy Spirit living in here, living within you, okay? Okay, so we get over here to the 12th chapter where we, where we started out, and, and we started with this, with this list. And this is always a tough one to preach on for me, this list of spiritual gifts, right? And so what was the list? Do you remember what there was? First one was wisdom, the message of knowledge, the, an, another one, faith. Here, let me change my glasses here. A message of faith, the gift of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, kinds of, different kinds of tongues, interpretations of tongues. So there's nine of them there. And that's not all. There's the, this list goes on and on and on of spiritual gifts. Now, the Corinthians church at this point in chapter 12, here's what was going on. The Corinthians church was a little hung up on tongues. And, they, and they, the, 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 what is the evidence of the Holy Spirit living within you is the gift of tongues. And so they got a little hung up here. And Paul's going, wait, no, 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 wait a second. No, wait a second. These gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the Corinthians church, these people were speaking in tongues and they, were, and they were touting that. They were lording it over their fellow Christians. Well, my gift is better than you because I speak in tongues and you don't. Okay? And so they're doing it like this. It tell, Paul is telling us that each one of these spiritual gifts that are given by the Holy Spirit from God to you are all gifts and they're only meant for one purpose to strengthen and edify the church and to glorify God the Father each one of these spiritual gifts and none of them not one of them is better than the other we got to the point where, where it says in, in the back half of the chapter 12 that we was reading there, there last, we, it says, okay, well, at, at first he places the apostles in there and he places the prophets in there and he places the teachers in there and, and it kind of gave you a list. One, two, three. This is what he places in the church. Well, this is not a hierarchy. This is, this is what God does. He puts these people in the church to edify and to strengthen the body of Christ is how he does this. And so, this is the context in which this love chapter comes out of. We're talking about gifts of the Spirit, right? So, now, in thinking about gifts of the Spirit, in those nine gifts of the Spirit, was love mentioned? No, love wasn't mentioned. But in the last verse of chapter 12, it says this. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret tongues? And verse 31 says this. Now, eagerly desire the greater gift. And yet, I will show you the most excellent way. So, chapter 13. Verse 1 says this. Now, I like chapter 13 because it just really, it, it seems poetic, doesn't it? When you read through this chapter, it's just beautiful what, what Paul says about love. Now listen very carefully. If I speak in tongues of men or angels, but I do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Now, that's pretty harsh words for these people that really believe in, oh, well, the Holy Spirit. If you, if you have the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues. That's kind of a hard hit in the head, really. But... He wants us to realize that these gifts don't work without love. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, 
but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all of my possessions to the poor, and I give over my body to hardship that I may boast, and I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. And it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always preserves. Love never fails. Now listen to this next part. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be silenced, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part will also disappear. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I responded like a child. When I became a man, I put away child. I, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That is such a beautiful piece of scripture, isn't it? Man. It is just amazing how beautiful that piece of scripture is. Here, you take that away from me. I'm no longer allowed to use it. Love. Love never fails. Love never fails. And so I look at this piece of scripture and I'm going, okay, wait a minute, okay, wow. So you get through this part of it, okay? Okay, so the, so so you're thinking about the Corinthian church, and they've and they've got this hang up where they're saying, okay, well, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. This is what the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If if I if I see someone speaking of tongues, I know that they're full of the Holy Spirit, right? And so and so there's, that's where they're kind of hung up at. And Paul says, no, I want you to desire the greater gift, the greater gift. The greater gift is love. But, now wait a second. How come love wasn't mentioned as a gift of the Holy Spirit? You know why? Because God is love. God is love. So, if God is love, and the Holy Spirit is also God, and He dwells within us, then love's in all of us, right? If God's in us, God is love, Holy Spirit lives inside of us when we accept Jesus Christ. God's love is in each one of us. And I was like, okay. So, that's why it's really not mentioned because the love of God is in all of us. It's always there. Love is never fails because it's in us all. When it gets down to, when it gets down to this, this part, uh, when it's talking about love never fails, and then it, says, then it goes, but 
where there's prophecies, they will cease. And where there are tongues, they will be stilled. I was like, okay, wait a second. It says in the end times, it also says in another spot in the Bible, in the end times, uh, the, your old men will see visions and your young men will dream dreams. And, and it's talking about prophecy, right? Okay, so, so, so what are they talking about here? When it comes to completion, it also says in there, when it comes to completion, so this means at the end, there will be no more need for prophecy because it's here. All that prophecy that you've heard back here about Jesus coming, about all this stuff that's going on, it's here. There ain't no need for no more prophecy no more. There ain't no need for no more tongues no more because everybody understands each other. We all understand one another through the love of God. There's no need for any of this stuff. All the spiritual gifts all go away when that end comes. And I was like, okay, so, the, so, so what remains? Faith, hope, and love. So the greatest of these, and the one that never fails, they say, are love. So what happens to faith and hope? Well, you know what? It goes away too. Because faith and hope are realized. Those two things are realized. Our faith that God is there, our hope of eternal life with Him, when the end comes, when it comes to completion, all of a sudden faith and hope are realized. Now we realize that that is right. That that is where we're going. That's what we're doing. We realize that this faith, and as we have kept our faith throughout all of this time, it's realized that it's here. That it's here. And only thing that remains from there is love. And God is the love. And I think what Paul is doing with this piece of Scripture He's saying, you know what, you can get hung up in a lot of different areas. We can get hung up on knowledge. You know, I do a lot of studying anymore. I really do. I do a lot of studying. I'm reading through, I'm reading through this, through Corinthians, and I run across this. Watch this now. In chapter 8, it says this. And, and what the context of this piece of, piece of it is, is, is the, the church in Corinth, they were, they were eating what was sacrificed to idols. And they're, so they were eating this flesh that was sacrificed to idols. And Paul's going, nah, <laughs> you, don't, you shouldn't be doing that, guys. Come on now. And so chapter 8 takes care of this. But he starts out like this. Now about food, sacrificed to idols, we know that... We all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. And I was like, boy, I like that. I got to use that. It doesn't matter whether it fits or not, I'm going to use it. Because that's a beautiful piece of scripture. We can have so much knowledge that we can get arrogant and we can go, oh, well, I know about this and I know about this. And we can completely not even think about loving one another. And we can use our knowledge to put someone down or to make them feel like they're lesser than me or you or whoever. We can use a gift of the Spirit to actually hurt someone else. We can. We can. Or cause division. Add the gift of tongues. And I'll use that one as an example. Because there are more not just that one. The gift of tongues is a division. Some people say, yep, it still exists. And I've seen it happen. And some people say, nope, it doesn't exist. It's gone away. We don't need that. There's no point in that no more. We've got translators for that kind of stuff. Don't need it. Makes a division, doesn't it? 
So now all of a sudden, now we've got a division in the church. The body, the body of Christ, which is everybody that believes in Jesus Christ as Lord. Each one of us that call Jesus Christ as Lord is part of that body. Brothers and sisters, we're all, all part of it. It doesn't matter what your church you belong to, whether you're Methodist or Catholic or, or Baptist or, or whatever, AG or Pentecost or whatever, you're all part of the body. If you claim Jesus Christ as Lord, we're all part of that body of Christ. We are. And I said this last week. We, some of us, are way more willing to amputate pieces of the body because we don't believe like you do. We don't need you. We all need each other. We do. We all need each other. Just think for a second, if you would. If every person on the face of this planet that says Jesus Christ is Lord would all pull together in the same direction and love one another, what would this planet look like? I will guarantee you it wouldn't look like it does today. It wouldn't. That love Love conquers all. It says in a different place in the Bible, love covers a multitude of sin. And I'm like, wow. So, so what's the evidence of the Holy Spirit? If I, can't, if I can't say that the evidence of somebody having the Holy Spirit is you speaking in tongues, is there evidence of the Holy Spirit? Yes. And here's what it is. It's love. It's love. That's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not wisdom. It's not knowledge. It's not any of those things. You can have those gifts and you can use those gifts. And all those gifts are used for building up of the church and strengthening the body. That's what those gifts are used for. That's why they're there. The evidence, though, of the Holy Spirit indwelling within you is love. Paul calls them the fruits of the spirits in Galatians. So in Galatians, the last chapter of Galatians, there is a list. Here's a list. This is how you tell that someone has the Holy Spirit living within them. But the fruits of the Spirit is, the very first one is love. The very first one. First one on the list, love. That's the fruits of the Spirit. Evidence of the Holy Spirit living within you is your love. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things there are no laws. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking envy in each other. Now, boy, that's excellent. That's excellent. That's what love is. That's what the body of Christ is all about. And how we pull together and how we bring forward God in this world. And it's all about the love. And we get hung up so many times. And, 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 so, and so I've preached about love several different times. And I, and I, and I think, and, I, and, I've, and, I've, and I've said this a couple of different times. Love and lust. We, we, we as human beings, we say love. Well, I love my shoes. Well, I love my new car. Well, I love, I love this. And I love my chiefs. The Greeks, and I've even done this one before, the Greeks break love down in three different areas. Eros, love, 
Philos love and agape love. Agape love is that unconditional love of God. And I'm sure you guys have all heard this, that sermon. A lot of people have preached that. And it's a good one. It really is. It really is because it kind of gives us a, here's, this is love. This is love. You know, every, everything that you say love to isn't always love or isn't always perception, the right perception of love. Love is something that we give and we expect nothing from. That we help someone that needs it. That we take care of our elder family members. That we help them when they need help. That we take care of our little ones and make sure that everything is good for them. That love, that love like God loves. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I hit that scripture and I was like, wow, okay. Here's the historical context of what that is. This is what it is. Paul was talking about, hey, folks, don't get hung up back here on your spiritual gifts. You've got them. I'm telling you, you got them. And you know you got them. Use them. Use them. Use your spiritual gifts because you know what? You're part of the body of Christ. And if you're not using your spiritual gift, you're not helping the body, right? If you're... Going, well, you know what? I don't know what to do. Do something. Do something. Pray for someone. Pick up the phone. Give them a call. When you know somebody's sick or hurting or dying, we've got a card ministry in this church. We send out cards in, in, this, in this church, in the connection. comes from this, from this church. We send out cards to people that are hurting, need healing. And a handwritten card from someone in this day and age of this technology and texting and everything this way means more to a person now than it ever has. It really does. It really does. And that love of God pours right through that pen onto that card and to that person. There's so many ways that we can show the love of God. And as we move forward, Mark was talking about visioning and, and everything that we're doing. The first thing that we need to do, like you said, the Holy Spirit, we need to make sure that we're connecting with that Holy Spirit. And everything we do needs to be done with love. With love. If God is love and God abides in us and that Holy Spirit is part of that love, that love has to show through us. The light of Christ. We talk about the light of Christ. That's the light of Christ. That's the love. That's the love. It's all part of the same thing. And it, and it, and it just it, it makes me go, wow, okay. Okay, so this is so much bigger than, than I am. I, I, I looked at, I looked at uh, this operation that her father was having. Do you realize how much knowledge we have? We can take a little bitty tiny chip and put it in a computer and make a computer give us all this information in the world that we can see. We can go into somebody's arm and all, all the way up to their brain and stop an aneurysm. Now, how smart are we? I mean, I'm not touting the human race, but buddy, I'm telling you what, we got some stuff going on now. We do. We have really got some stuff going on. We are intelligent. We're intelligent. Nothing else in God's creation on this planet can do what we can do. And if our knowledge is that much, think of how much higher God's ways are than ours. Is that unfathomable or what? I'm just like, wow, I am so in awe by our mighty, powerful God and how He works in all situations. And, and you go, boy, I don't know how that's ever going to come out, but it always does, doesn't it? It always does, and it always comes out to glorify Him. And it just amazes me how it happens. 
and that love that is built within each and every one of us through the Holy Spirit that we accept when we accept Jesus Christ into our heart and that Holy Spirit comes to live within us, that love is there. That love for our fellow man, that love for one another. Like Constance said, every person in this room earlier, we was all having conversations, we were all talking about this, talking about this. It was love. It was love. It was love. That love of God and love for one another. And we've got it. We've got it here. We just need to rig figure out like Mark was saying, that visioning is what they're doing. That's what they're doing. We're figuring out how to get that out. Outside of these four walls, we have to show this world around us what love can do. Love can move mountains. Love can accomplish all kinds of things. We don't even know the tip of the iceberg there. We really don't. Because there's so much division and so much discontent going on in our world and Satan Satan's here and he keeps picking at it he keeps picking at it of wars and rumors of wars and all this different stuff going on in the world you know what Satan he's here he's here he's here we have the power to overcome him though through the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ who lives in us we have the power to prevail. We do. We do. That love makes it for us. The love of God and the love for one another. Love is patient. Love is kind. So, we started talking about the gifts of the Spirit, but the greater gift is what we desire, and it's that love. It's that love that is built within each and every one of us. The love that we should show one another. If you would stand.
My prayer for you today is to let the transformative power of God's love change your life. That transformative power changed my life and it has changed many, many lives in this world. It really has. We know that. We know that. And it will continue to change lives in this world because God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us, the Holy Spirit that lives and breathes and courses through our veins is here. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Mighty God, we come before you today, Lord, thanking you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for your love that transforms our lives. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with us, dear Lord, as we, as we start to move forward out into the world around us, dear Lord, that we might show that love, that light of Christ that you give to us. We ask, dear Father, that you would go with us now as we go to our homes, dear Lord. And, and, we, and we think about what we have learned this evening, what we've learned from Paul's letter in the, to the Corinthian church. We ask, dear Father, that you would help us, dear Lord, to be those people, God's people in this world. In Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray, amen. This slide has been at the end of our service every week for many, many weeks in a row. And I don't know how many of you have read this. We are a holy people called out of darkness to show forth the glory of Almighty God. God be with you until we see you again next week. Thank you very much.